today let's discuss uh, something about uh, pulmonary edema uh, we have discussed some of its features and during the time of uh, physical examination physical examination of respiratory system uh, we have discussed the symptomatology or presentation of pulmonary edema so today we can discuss pulmonary edema in detail usually pulmonary edema comes as a complication of many uh, diseases involving lungs or heart so like other diseases we can here also there is a definition definition for pulmonary edema uh, the term pulmonary edema may be regarded as an increase in the fluid content of the extravascular tissues of the lung and the mechanisms include rise in the pulmonary blood pressure changes in the dynamic of fluid fluids and proteins through the capillary walls and changes in the interstitial so the term pulmonary edema refers or regarded is regarded as an may be regarded as an increase in the uh, fluid content of the extravascular tissues of the lung and the mechanisms include rise in the pulmonary blood pressure changes in the dynamics of fluids and proteins through the capillary walls and changes in the interstitial so basically it is accumulation of fluid in the lungs the accumulation of fluid can be in the alveoli or in the interstitium so depending on the amount of fluid or presentation of fluid uh, settling of fluid in the uh, whether it is in the alveoli or in the tissue we can divide pulmonary edema into alveolar edema and interstitial edema so uh, clinically or radiologically we can divide uh, pulmonary edema into Uh, alveolar edema and uh, interstitial inter- interstitial edema then we can move on to the uh, etiological factors or causation of pulmonary edema that is very very important etiological factors of pulmonary edema how can we classify the etiology we can broadly classify it the etiological factors into two that is cardiogenic causes and uh, non cardiogenic causes cardiogenic causes and uh, non cardiogenic causes let's move on to the cardiogenic causes the etiology of pulmonary edema is very important there is a good number of conditions which can lead to pulmonary edema pulmonary edema comes as a complication of a good number of diseases or uh, yeah, fatality case fatalities first of all about cardiogenic causes what are the cardiogenic causes first and most important one is over the most important reason of pulmonary edema is left ventricular failure left ventricular failure uh, then myocardial infarction uh, mitral stenosis then cardiac arrhythmias uh, left atrial myxoma then hypertensive encephalopathy pulmonary infarction etc etc these are the cardiogenic causes among the cardiogenic causes the most important uh, is left ventricular failure then comes mitral stenosis left ventricular failure and mitral stenosis are the most important reason cardiogenic uh, reasons for pulmonary edema then other uh, conditions like myocardial infarction arrhythmias then atrial myxomas encephalopathy is also infarction so these are the cardiogenic causes then we can move on to the non cardiogenic causes that is causes other than heart so causes can be in the cause of pulmonary edema can be the heart or outside the heart then what are the non cardiogenic causes uh, first of all fluid overload fluid overload is another one reason for pulmonary edema so when there is excess of fluid naturally the formation of there can be formation of edema then neurogenic causes neurogenic causes like fracture skull fractures skull fractures encephalitis 
then post ictal stage that is after epilepsy post ictal stage then uh, increased intracranial pressure all these are neurogenic causes fracture of skull and subarachnoids post ictal stage and raised intracranial pressure then another reason is near drowning that is partial drowning near drowning then a shock then certain infections infections can also lead to pulmonary edema for example endotoxins from uh, gram negative septicemia then pneumonia uh, then bronchopneumonia uh, all this can lead to uh, pulmonary edema so certain infections can lead to pulmonary edema then inhalation inhalation of noxious fumes or fumes and gases so in uh, industrial accidents uh, pulmonary edema may be the cause of death uh, inhalation of noxious gases like nitrogen dioxide chlorine hydrogen sulfide then sulfur dioxide ammonia then phosgene mustard gas ozone then uh, polymer fumes inhalation of metallic salts all this can lead to pulmonary edema so inhalation is an important uh, causation inhalation of noxious gases of, and fumes this phosgene uh, and mustard gas are used in war time as a chemical weapon also in the second world war time etc uh, it is used as a chemical weapon then another possibility is inhalation of gastric acid inhalation or aspiration of gastric acid that's called mendelson syndrome mendelson mendelson syndrome inhalation of gastric acid or aspiration of gastric acid then rapid aspiration of large pleural effusion so when there is pleural effusion or large quantity of fluid is present in the pleural cavity it is aspirated so Uh, it is usually it is slowly aspirated that is the procedure slow aspiration so when when the aspiration of fluid is very fast or when there is rapid aspiration of large pleural effusion it can lead to uh, pulmonary edema there is there will be sudden uh, enlargement of the lung tissue it can which can lead to uh, pulmonary edema then another possible is high altitude high altitude pulmonary edema in my mind is usually seen in mountaineers Uh, or for example we were moving to uh, high altitudes in kashmir uh, or in the himalayas etc the usual one is one of the complication of riders the travelers uh, high altitude pulmonary edema or mountaineers then uremia uremia can lead to pulmonary edema then trauma itself trauma to can lead to capillary da- damage causing leaky lung condition called leaky lung capillary leading capillary da- damage leading to leaky lung so trauma is another factor then uh, toxic causes are there uh, it can be drug induced drug induced uh, for example iv narcotic abuse particularly heroin heroin abuse then methadone salicylates then cytotoxic drugs like uh, bleomycin cyclophosphamide nitrofurane these are cytotoxic drugs so use of cytotoxic drugs like bleomycin cyclophosphamide and nitrofurantoin all this can lead to pulmonary edema so drug induced in that in the drug induced category there is uh, narcotic abuse like you uh, say usage of heroin uh, etc then use of methadone salicylates and cited toxic drugs then in toxic category poisoning also there poisoning with alcohol alcohol poisoning then organophosphorus poisoning uh, ex- poisoning with barbiturates all this all these conditions you can see pulmonary edema uh, you might have seen uh, death death by poisoning uh, um insecticides are the guys are the sleeping pills are the right sleeping pills are sleeping pills are the pictures are going to come down the line uh when all are kind of or mouth in the line or see that bleed in that like froth are going to come hanging like all the conditions like froth are going to come it is due to pulmonary edema 
then hypersensitivity one another reason is hypersensitivity response that is mismatched transfusion blood transfusion angioedema then uh, sle uh, then good pasteur syndrome etc that is all these in all these cases there is hypersensitivity response so hypersensitivity response for example in blood transfusion angioedema sle or in good pasteur syndrome then another uh, reason is dic or disseminated intravascular coagulation falciparum malaria then hangi i have said hangi thungi vecha alkarade pictures kandu kenyara you can see froth froth in the mouth this you to call marid hangi uh, then pneumothorax all this can lead to uh hard marid so these are the non cardiogenic causes there are a good number of causes or divisions under non cardiogenic category uh, so we can divide the etiology or causation of pulmonary edema into two categories uh, one due to oh, the affection of heart or disease of the heart that is cardiogenic causes and non cardiogenic causes cardiogenic and non cardiogenic causes it's very important let's go through the textbooks then we can move on to the uh, clinical features of pulmonary edema that's also very important we can identify pulmonary edema very easily acute pulmonary edema is a common medical emergency emergency and usually uh, present as an emergency common it's a more common medical emergency uh, the onset is often sudden and there is a feeling of oppression in the chest there is a feeling of oppression in the chest uh, and there is acute distressing dyspnea there is acute distressing dyspnea then another important feature is incessant short cough incessant short cough and there is sputum there is a peculiarity of sputum we have discussed in the uh, physical examination part the sputum of pulmonary edema is very characteristic that is pink frothy sputum eppalum uh, epajojalam parayanadu that is pink frothy if you are getting pink frothy sputum then definitely it is pulmonary edema the pink color is due to presence of blood or rbc presence of rbc pink frothy sputum that is so incessant short cough with copious pink frothy sputum or blood tinged fluid from mouth or nose from blood or blood tinged sputum from mouth or nose can be there and there is a peculiar phenomena called cough 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 speed 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 so incessant coughing and spitting that is important phenomena of cough 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 speed 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 this the easy explanation of the is one of the most important symptomatology of pulmonary edema and naturally there is tachypnea dyspnea anxiety sweating uh, the cyanosis development of cyanosis uh then feeble pulse uh then so on examination on examination the patient there can be widespread rails occasional wrong cry then initially the lower lobes are involved so when they examine the patient the vasculatory findings are more seen over the lower zones or the rails are seen over the uh, lower areas then fall of temperature can be there and death is usually due to respiratory failure pulmonary edema leading to respiratory failure and the condition may be fatal in a few hours then uh, the voice or the modern finding is that the voice sounds you can hear the moist sounds uh, not mere by oscillation we can hear by our ears also Uh, the moist sounds increase and become audible at a distance we can hear even at a distance the uh, breath of the sound additional added sounds of pulmonary edema patient the moist sounds increase and become audible at a distance then signs of left ventricular failure such as gallop rhythm that is additional one sound will be there 
other than this as one understood that is called Gyana. Gyana Pratham can be there. Uh, then features of valid omniscience also can be there in Palma reading. For example, in mitral stenosis, the uh, uh, edema is due to left ventricular disease or due to mitral stenosis. Naturally, features of valid omniscience will be there. Uh, so that's about the symptomatology. Symptomatology is very easy to remember. Uh, it's an um, acute emergency usually. Onset is sudden, then feeling of operation, chest, acute and uh, distressing dyspnea is there, incessant short cough and the, that peculiarity or peculiar symptom, cough, 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 spit, 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 symptom will be there. Uh, then uh, the sputum, characteristic sputum you get in palmoridma that is pink frothy sputum or uh, in some cases you will get blood tinged sputum from the mouth or nose then sweating uh, tachypnea is there anxiety then cyanosis people first all this then the signs all this get in uh, these are the important findings you get in pulmonary edema then we can move on to the investigations the most important or the useful investigative procedure is uh, x-ray itself so Radiologically, radiologically we can classify edema into interstitial edema or alveolar edema. Two types of edema can be there. And uh, there is difference in the X-ray also. X-ray feature also in case of uh, alveolar and uh, pulmonary edema. Let's see what's it, what it is. Then about the X-ray feature of interstitial edema. Interstitial edema, here the fluid is mainly seen in the interstitium. That is the tissue that support the airways. That is the interstitium. Normally the septa in the lungs are invisible. In the normal x-ray we can't see the lung septa. But in case of interstitial edema, this we can see the septal lines. There is there will be edema fluid in the septa and we can see the uh, uh, line, septal line, lines, uh, septal shadow as line shadows. Then another important finding you get in interstitial edema is two types of lines are seen in or opaque lines are seen in uh, interstitial edema that is curly, K E R L E Y, K E R L E Y, curly A lines and curly B lines, curly A lines and curly B lines. Most important is curly B lines. Curly B lines is characteristic of interstitial edema. Then what is curly B line? These are horizontal lines not more than 2 cm long seen laterally in the lower lung zones and they reach the lung edge like blood vessels. Unlike blood vessels, they treat these lines reach the uh, uh, lung edge. That is the differentiated feature from blood vessel. This uh, main line, uh, curly B line reaches the lung edge. And it is usually seen in the peripherally and the length of the line is about 2 cm and it is horizontal, horizontal small line seen towards the periphery. Opaque lines. Uh, these lines are called curly B lines. And there are curly A lines also in case of interstitial rarely curly A lines are seen in interstitial edema. And it is much thinner. Uh, than the adjacent blood vessel. When we compare with the blood vessel, it is much thinner than the adjacent blood vessel. And the length is about 3 to 4 cm. And it is slanting also. Slanting and it is seen towards the hilar region. It is a slanting line. In case of curly B line, it is a horizontal line about 2 cm. Or so in length, horizontal line. And seen towards the periphery. So, two types of lines you get in the social ledema is curly B lines and curly A lines. That is the typical X-ray finding you get in interstitial edema. Then the X-ray finding of alveolar edema or the fluid is more in the uh, alveoli. And the X-ray finding is very interesting in alveolar edema. Uh, here there is more fluid in the alveoli and bilateral all lobe will be affected. And that's an important finding and 
the shadow is more the opacity is more towards the hyla and the opacity fades out towards the periphery leaving leaving a relatively clear sound towards the periphery so the opacity will be more towards the hyla region and the opacity gradually fades towards the peripheral region so from the both hyla the opacity the opacity will be more in the hyla region both in the both sides and the opacity gradually spreads or fan, it gets it has a fan out look and becomes fade uh, lighter towards the or disappear disappears towards periphery so it has a typical appearance called butterfly butterfly pattern or bat swing or oval like a chirag pole like a butterfly chirag pole fanning of opacity or fading out from hyla that is called bat swing appearance or butterfly pattern it is typically seen in uh, palmar edema especially alveolar edema so two type of presentation you get in uh, palmar edema uh, curly b and curly a lines in the sessional edema and bat swing or but butterfly appearance in uh, alveolar edema so that's about the uh, x ray picture then we can move on to the management management of uh, palmar edema Uh, emergency management. Emergency management is indicated in to save the life. That is a very important, usually casualty or emergency management. Then the cardiac causes. Cardiac causes are treated with treated if there is a left uh, heart failure. Usually, the etiological factor I have mentioned. The one of the important categories, uh, category of disease, or the disease come under the cardiogenic cause. So. Uh, the patient is having heart diseases it should be treated properly then oxygen administration is another uh, important management thera- management procedure of therapy that is oxygen administration then digitalis administration aminophilin then vasodilator drugs are given then maintenance of airway there is edema normally uh, naturally there will be occlusion of airways so clearance of airway is very important there is froth and large quantity of sputum or mucus it should be cleared uh, maintenance of airway is very important so it is done by tracheobronchial suc- suction tracheobronchial suction using uh, catheter tracheobronchial suction is important then uh, bronchoscopy bronchoscopy or tracheostomy and drainage is done then in case of high altitude pulmonary edema descent to lower altitude descent to lower altitude with supporting measures all of a sudden descend here uh, high altitude la ponor edema allengile edema like the pulmonary edema features develop yanundengil gradually lower altitude like ponor allengil mountainous aanundengil lower altitude gradually ponor that avada no sustain cheyidittu korcha time kaynittayirikum pinne thaavadu ponor katta katta maayittayirikum thaavadu ponor so a descent to lower altitude with supportive measures such as fluid replacement fluid replacement is also important and ventilatory assistance ventilatory as the oxygen administration of the ambulance then corticosteroids corticosteroids in high doses in case of pneumonia then septicemia or and also in mendelson mendelson syndrome oxygen administration is uh, given so then in case of the condition called hypostatic congestion is there 